Good morning guys. Look at what I just ran across hiking through the woods. Yes, in leather gloves and a helmet and riding gear. Yeah, it's the new FTR 1200. Except this is the base model with a little bit of uh, add-ons on it. Let's take this bad boy out for a spin, shall we? Yeah, look at the seats and add-on. Look at this, the luggage too. Oh yeah. Well, let's take this thing for a spin, shall we? Let's turn the key on and let's go. Oh, listen to that purr. <laughs> uh, that's stock, too. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's go. Hi guys, nothing to prove here. Today's a beautiful day, cause any day one can be out on two wheels is a beautiful day. And yeah, it's cloudy today, but it's okay cause I'm on two wheels. And yes, today I'm giving the FTR 1200 another shot. Say, wait a minute, what do you mean another shot? Well, last summer I did the S and the guy before me put diesel fuel in the tank and then they had to drain it out and then I when I took it out it was the first tank of real gas so it was running a little rough and I highly criticized the mapping and said it was rough it was uh, and I think that changed the whole feeling of the bike so I don't feel that I got uh, that I gave the FTR a fair shake so this is why I'm doing it and I'm also doing the base model as you can see here uh, which here, the, and another reason why I'm doing this, if you go around in Europe, what they're doing, especially here in Germany now, I don't know about in the UK guys, you'll have to check, but if you see a bike on the showroom floor with zero kilometers on it, they will put a, a one day registration on it, and then they can take two grand off of it. So this, for example, is 14K with tax here in Germany. And well, now it's gone from 19 to 16 because of the Corona, who knows what's going on. But now you do the day tag thing on this, they're gonna take two more grand off of that. Now you're down to 12 grand. Now this all of a sudden becomes an interesting machine for 12 grand. Yeah, I'm, I'm serious guys, pick up the phone call. Your, your dealers here in Europe. I don't know about in the States what they're doing with rebates and stuff like that, trying to get rid of them, but that's what they're doing here in Europe. All right, guys, so now you know why I'm doing this bike, and I want to give it a fair shake. That's to be honest with you. All right, now let's get into this beautiful piece of artwork. Look at this. I love this with the lines here with the teardrop t tank going down all the way right into the shock, into the rear, and then also the two exhausts. Oh, yeah, this is looking great. 123 horse and 120 newton meters of torque the torque comes on at about six grand but at about five you really felt it it was coming on four grand oh yeah i was pulling like a freight train five grand it was coming on like a banshee so how does this powertrain engine and transmission work together the powertrain seems to come into its own around fourth or fifth gear and just putting along here, just on this country road, doing 65. I suppose I could pick it up to 70, huh? Um, but you bring it into six. Oh, everything, everything works fine, smooth and dandy uh, for this powertrain at, at these speeds. Now, where is the power? Yeah, you got to get it above three. Uh, probably right around four you're getting massive amounts of torque and then by five you're 
feeling it. <laughs> Needless to say. So, you know, let's try it. Let's try it coming out of this corner here. Let's see here. Exit. Yeah. I don't want to lose my 360 camera off the back. <laughs> so the 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 when you shift this transmission, it clunks. You know it. Uh, that's it's an Indian. Um, but also, you can blip it if you want. You can do clutchless ups and downs. Downs are a little difficult on this, but you can do it once you learn the timing. But uh, overall, on this bike, uh, other than the rough throttle mapping. I'll give it a thumb and a half for the power train. All right, guys, let's come up to the suspension. Since this is not the S, this is the base model, you do not get fully adjustable showers. You only get the 43 millimeter non-adjustable, and you have 150 millimeters of travel here. Attached to that are, yeah, your Brembo 4.32s with, yeah, steel braided brakes. And, yeah, you guessed it, yeah, look at that, a B there too, Brembo. So with that combination, I'm not going to complain about any stopping power. And these are on 320 mil discs, although those are floaters, but, yeah, that's okay, the, the, the calipers. Coming back here, 150 mil of travel here, and you can adjust it there and also for preload. Uh, but what I wanted to point out here is it's a 265 disc on the rear head with on a, on a disc and it's a one piston Brembo back here. Now, how does this steel trellis tubular frame feel on a rough road, for example? So the chassis on these rougher roads you can feel it it feels like a super naked chassis and um, but it's getting two thumbs from me because it feels like a super naked chassis although with the performance and power uh, it feels more like a roadster so actually I think you nailed it Indian with the segment and style of this bike with this chassis I think you nailed it so that's why you're getting two thumbs up with me and the, and the rear brake <laughs> yeah, I, I can tell right when it's coming in. Now let's try the front. Oh, beautiful! It's well, it's the it's the Brembo 4.32s, so of course they're going to be good. So overall, the chassis it's right up there with stiffness as far as the super nakeds, but I would put it in the category of a roadster. Simple. Um, so if you're familiar with the super nakeds and how stiff and firm and solid those chassis are, that's this. Uh, but this has a little more weight than those, so I would call this more of a roadster style bike than, rather than a super naked. Definitely this is not a super naked. So two thumbs up on the chassis and good job, boom, boom. Now guys, I want to show you, you might have already noticed there are a couple of extra things on here. This is extra. This is from the parts bin. This is also extra from Indian and also the Pro Taper handlebars. They're a little bit higher uh, than the, than the uh, stock and actually I like that. I think I would opt for this option with this handlebar. They're a little bit higher so you sit up a little bit straighter. Excellent. Um, let's go back, continue on back here at this beautiful pike. I, I don't know if I like the exhaust though. Hmm. Yeah. Coming around here, yeah, you can mount. See, it's got the mountings for the bags on this side too. I do like this. There, let me show you. Look at this. <laughs> the LED shows up. That's cool. I like that. That's good. Cool. And coming around here, look at the seat. And then also the bag, look at that. Yeah, the, the browns match exactly. I do like it, yeah, and that's an option too, by the way, yeah, guys, and so is the seat. Uh, 840 mils off the ground with this seat. And the tank is 13 liters, full up. This bike weighs 230 kilos. Now, how does that weight feel 
in town, for example? Uh, the in-town manors are really good for 230 kilos, actually. It's better than the 1250R manners. Uh, I think the, the, the having the gas tank below the seat uh, helps with this. With this, uh, although this fueling is still a little inconsistent. But uh, overall, the flickability, well, it's there, it's good. Uh, it's a 19 inch front and an 18 inch rear. You're not gonna, you're not gonna be as flickable as 17 inch, of course. That's just the way it is. So, but given what this bike is, it's a roadster. It's not a super naked. It's a roadster, guys. And is it flickable for a roadster? Yes. If you guys think the 1250R BMW 1250R is is good. This is better as far as its flickability. Uh, but the mapping and fueling on the 1250R is just phenomenal. Uh, that's second to none. I'm afraid to say this doesn't compete with that at all. But uh, overall, in town, just sitting here, yeah, I can see that. Uh, this would be fun, going in and out of traffic. It really would. So the Intel Manors are getting two thumbs up from me. Boom, boom. All right, guys, now let's come up to the handlebars here. Standard, you have cruise control here. Standard lights there. And also your standard over here. There, here is where you can, you can uh, change what you want to see on the display down here. Like that, I prefer the RPM. Uh, and you got a fuel gauge in there, and what gear and time. Uh, on a dial, look at that. Beautiful, loving that. It really matches when you step back and look at the whole package. This matches, even, even with this optional tiny, tiny windscreen. Everything just kind of gels. It looks good. Um, anytime an OEM, you can put one dial down and give me speed, RPM, fuel gauge, and a clock, you're going to get two thumbs way, way up from me. And that's what you did, Indian. Look at that. Boom, boom. All the other OEMs need to sit up and take note. That's how you do it. <laughs> oh, yeah, forgot. USB charging port also right there. That's cool. So even my BMW F900XR does not have this. A charging port USB I have to go and install one and here it's coming on here great loving it oh and also because this is the base model it only comes with the mapping in standard mode but there is an actually an aftermarket uh, a company that will mount you can mount something on the bar here a little switch and then you can toggle between the three ride modes it's three four hundred euros i think it is and i forget who it is i'll have to find out and post that in the description below once i get done with that but so that's the difference between the s because you get the four and a half four point three inch tft display and then you can toggle between what uh, ride modes you want with traction control uh, and you can also turn abs off uh, and um but because it's this they don't give you that option it's still there in the software it's just they don't have any room to put it here that was how it was explained to me so overall assessment of this bike here we go um was i a little harsh on my first review okay i'll be honest yeah i'm harsh on myself i'm the first to criticize myself i was so i was a little harsh on it uh, has the mapping improved? Yeah, a little bit. Tiniest little bit. Um, back then, I couldn't strongly re recommend this bike. I said to take it out and see if, see if it's the bike that fits you. I won't say that. Now I'm going to say two thumbs up, guys. Um, because now, also taking two grand off the price tag, 12 grand, uh, this all of a sudden becomes a very attractive bike. Um, but the S back last summer when I was comparing it was 18 grand, 17, 18 grand. And it's like, okay, once you get into that 
area, you need to have some refinement uh, or performance, and this had neither. Uh, but now, for 12 grand for this base model, boom, 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 two thumbs way, way up. That's with tax here in Germany. So, all right, guys. As always, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this review. And number one, guys, and the most important on the list is ride safe. That's the most important thing. And number two, guys, ride like there's nothing to prove. Take care. Cheers. Ha, 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 ha,